Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to finally start my series on the Deven displays. I previously made a video about introducing these displays and I made a small tutorial on how to set them up, how to upload your uh, files on them and so on. But now I want to create a series of tutorials uh, where you can fully utilize this display. And uh, hopefully my tutorials will be uh, good enough so you can understand how to work with these displays and how to utilize them according to your needs. And I already figured out some kind of structure so I will uh, go along that structure and the first thing that I will uh, show you is how to work with strings or text. How to send a text to the display. So for example you want to uh, display some kind of message on the display or how to enter some kind of text on the display using a keyboard and then send it uh, back to your computer or to an Arduino. I will show you both ways. But uh, essentially, since this uh, device communicates by serial communication, it doesn't really matter what is uh, the device on the other side, I mean the other side on the display, uh, because you just have to have a code which can understand what the display sends and which can create a code uh, which the display can understand. So yeah, depending on if you have one way or two way communication, then uh, you have to set up the uh, sending and receiving parties in a certain uh, way. So first of all, please check my previous video link is in the top right corner, you can see it there, because I already put down the basics there. So I won't tell you those things in uh, detail there. Here I want to get to the point more quickly. So let's uh, start with uh, the tutorial and let's see how to work with these things. So I have already created the project obviously and I have already tested all the things which I'm going to show you. So we already have the open project here, but uh, I still want to get you through the starting point. So the most important thing here is that you have to create fonts, uh, basically characters which will be printed on your display. So at the bottom here, you see this uh, zero hashtag uh, word bank generating uh, icon or label, you click on it, and then uh, you get this window here. And what you have to do is that you have to adjust the scale and the shift, uh, these four uh, parameters, to have all the characters uh, fitted in, the, in their available area, or you can see it here also. And uh, typically it's a good idea to have something wide, so I uh, choose the W, and then I start uh, changing the scale. So this is really arbitrary, but uh, you get the point what you need to do. Uh, you have to change these things. So now for me it looks yeah, almost okay. Maybe a little bit shifting this way. So yeah, you can see that it fits here and it also all characters fit here. So then uh, you click on this create and then uh, this file which you see the file name here will be on the root folder where the exe file of this uh, software is located. So create a folder and uh, copy that file when this generation is done into a dvin uh, underscore uh, set folder because that uh, will be copied on your SD card. So then this is done and then I show you the second most important thing which is uh, creating the configuration file. So still at this config tool we have this config generator so we open this and then we get this window. and. Uh, I have to say that this is something very stupid option from uh, Devin. So if someone from them uh, checks this video, please change this because it uh, it is very confusing for beginners, including me. So I was struggling really for hours to figure this thing out. Uh, here you see this option called touch sensitive variable uh, changes update. And by default, it is non auto. And what this does is that if you leave it on non auto, and uh, you generate your config file and upload it to your uh, display. Even though uh, you make the display 
uh, in the controls to automatically upload the change of the parameters to the serial port, it will not do it because it's blocked here. So in order to unblock it, you have to change this to auto and then create the config file. And uh, this should not be default because uh, beginners will not get it. I, I was, when I first received this uh, display, I was struggling really for hours to figure this out. So this should be auto. And then uh, this uh, makes sense, I guess, uh, for everyone. So it's just the orientation of the display. And uh, we are going to use an Arduino Nano here, which doesn't have a secondary serial port. So we will need to use the software serial. And I have noticed that this baud rate is not good uh, with the software serial. It's just not working uh, properly. So change this to 9600 and then use that uh, because the other uh, doesn't work. And then uh, if you are like me and get uh, easily annoyed with the beeping sound of the display, then you can also turn off the touch sound. And then you can change uh, other parameters, of course, but uh, this touch sensitive variable uh, changes update is very important and the board rate is also important. The others is more like optional. And here you have to create a new config file and then uh, you will be redirected to your folder. So I have my folder here and you have to save it with this name, T5L, like the name of the chip that they use, CFG dot CFG. And then you save this and this will be also uploaded to your display. So this is, uh, you just save it and uh, that's done. So now we can finally build the menu. And actually that should start in a picture editor software, GIMP, Photoshop, Paint, you name it, depends on your requirements. Uh, for this simple uh, example, uh, I use GIMP and I created a few pictures and I will show you them first. So this will be our main screen. So at the top, I just put some uh, random text there with the subject of this video. And then I put a text here, which will suggest me that uh, in this box, salmon or pink or whatever color, uh, I will have the string uh, which I want to send to the Arduino or to the serial terminal. And then uh, in the blue box, I will uh, print the text which is received by the display. And then I mentioned that uh, we need a keyboard. So for that, we also have to create a uh, separate page because uh, DWIN displays don't have a built-in uh, keyboard uh, display. So you have to make it from scratch, literally. So I put together this uh, display and uh, the structure here is very simple. So here I have the letters and numbers and then I have a function key, which is the space, and uh, another function key, which is the enter. So that will send uh, and confirm uh, the message which I typed in. And it's important to have some area, which now here is this pink area, or salmon colored area, above or, or somewhere around uh, this uh, keyboard. Because when you open the keyboard on your display, uh, this page will pop up, uh, or part of this page, uh, I will show you how it's done. And you have to have uh, an extra space because whatever you type here by uh, touching the letters or the numbers will show up in that additional area. So we have these two files and they have to be named in the following way. I will show you in the other window. So here we enter the ICL generator and then uh, we have to select the pictures here. So yeah, I just load in uh, those, those pictures. And what is important is that the file name of the first page should be 00, zero and then you follow it with the file name. And then uh, the next uh, file name should be 01 and so on. And this is important because when you package uh, these pictures, which are the pages uh, with this ICL generator, then uh, it will allow the display to recognize uh, the page numbers. So you have to uh, name them like this. So you load in your pictures and then you generate ICL and it has to be named as 32. Again, to help the display when it uh, fetches the data from the SD card, and when you update the display configuration, then uh, the display will look for this 32.ICL and uh, it will load the, the required data from there. 
So it's important to name it like that. So you name it like 32 and then you save it. So now finally we can really uh, start with the programming part or more like uh, assembling part. So up here we have the touch and display config. So we open that and you can see that I have already set it up, but I uh, just go through the things what I did here. So the picture is already there uh, by the following way. So on the left hand side, you can see this image images view panel and you just click on this plus and then uh, you browse for your images and then load them in and then they will show up here. And if you see, I can switch between the images and uh, I can add functions to them. So let's start with the main screen just to look through. So you can see that I have a box here, another box, I just move it around and the third box. So uh, just very briefly, uh, this box here will be the text received by the display and it will be printed within the boundaries of this box. And that's why I made this uh, in uh, GIMP just to yeah, show where I should uh, draw my rectangle. So then this rectangle goes there roughly. And then uh, here first I want to show this uh, ASCII text input. So this will be the area which you have to touch in order to uh, show the display of the keyboard. So then uh, if you touch somewhere within these uh, boundaries, uh, the display will switch to the new page which shows the keyboard. And then when you press uh, the letters and numbers on the keyboard and uh, press enter, uh, the, the software will return to this main screen and put the content of the keyboard, whatever you typed, into this box. And then I put it here over the input uh, field because actually here you see this uh, part, that is the part where I should show the uh, data. So then that goes over that area. So first we have to create a keyboard. So we start with uh, that part. So here I open the keyboard and then you can see that I have already completed it. But uh, what you have to do is you go to the touch control here at the top and then you add the basic touch module. So then uh, what you should es essentially do is that you select basically each of these uh, letters and uh, space and enter and everything one by one. But what you should do, I think it's easier, you just make one, uh, let's say, rectangle which fits basically all of these uh, different characters. And uh, then you just have to do control C, control V and then you can uh, have a new one. And uh, the advantage of this way of doing it is that you always have fixed uh, dimensions of this rectangle. So then it's easier to move them around. But now that doesn't matter here, uh, what we need to do is that we, for example, uh, put one rectangle over the A. So then on the right hand side, uh, you can further modify the X, Y uh, coordinates. So that will be the position and WH is the width and height of this uh, rectangle. But uh, the most important thing is that this key value 0x uh, parameter. So you have to click on this uh, checkbox here, full QVER keyboard, and then a new window will pop up. Uh, here you see, or a button, not a window, but when you click this set button, a new uh, window will show up, this. And here you have to click on the character that you want to assign to this area. So this is over the letter A, so I find the letter A here and press it. And then now I have already done this, but then this 41, 61 uh, shows up in this te uh, text box. And then that will be assigned to the uh, letter A. And then you have to do this for yeah, 40 times more with the other uh, parameters and stuff. But once it's done, uh, we can return to the main display. And then uh, we can start working on the control of this ASCII text input. So this guy here. So again, we look at the right side and then uh, we start with this data auto uploading. This has to be checked. 
because this makes sure that when you finished typing in the keyboard and pressed enter and the display returned to this main uh, display, then the content, what you typed in, will be transferred to the serial port. So this has to be checked. And then this is the VP address. So basically the RAM address where you start to store your data. So uh, your data, depending on the length, will be between this uh, VP1000 uh, and whatever the length of this VP. And you have to keep in mind what kind of length uh, you use, because if you have, let's say, a long data that you store uh, on this address, but you start to store another variable uh, under an address which can, uh, let's say, uh, overlap with this uh, address, then you get the garbage data. So always keep uh, check of this uh, value. And then this is the text length. And you have to keep in mind that the length here is defined in words, so two bytes. So this is actually 100 bytes. Uh, then input mode, re-input. So whenever you open the keyboard again, the previous, previously entered uh, data will disappear and you start with an empty stuff. Because the other option, the edit text would be that the previous data shows up again and you can edit that, but now it's re-input. Uh, font library is zero because we just created a zero uh, library. And then uh, these two are very important. Uh, the width of the font should be half as the height or the height should be twice as much as the width. Otherwise, if you mess up this, uh, then the data which will show up will be garbage. Uh, cursor color, obvious, font color, obvious. Uh, I kept this upload value as typing unchecked, uh, can lead to confusions. And then uh, I jump over this because this doesn't uh, become relevant until we do other changes. So let me do that first. But uh, then display mode is direct display. So we show what we type. Otherwise, if it's a password uh, field, it can be mas masked by this asterisk uh, symbol. And then keyboard location, other pages. So when you open the keyboard, uh, you open a new page. So then we have this keyboard setting and we start with that. So we click on that. And then we have this new window with the pictures and we created a new page. Uh, for the keyboard. So we click on that, press OK. And now this thing comes up. So let me enlarge this. Now we have to select uh, the area which we want to show on the new page. And I want to select this because we need this part on the bottom or at the bottom because that's where we type. And that's here, the pink area where the typed text will show up. So I just save this, press OK. That's all. And uh, I don't have to change these anymore. Uh, if you are curious about this show location is that when you click this, uh, then uh, the keyboard will show up starting from the top left corner of the main page. So if you want to put it somewhere else, for example, here in the center, then you have to change uh, the coordinate, let's say, 230 and 330 x, y coordinates. But uh, I want it to start from the top left corner, so I don't change this to anything else than 0, 0. And now we have the input display area. We have to jump back to this part. So I click on set and I have to enlarge this again. And I have to have this displayed keyboard on. So you remember I selected only this area uh, previously here at the keyboard setting. So now I have to select the area where I show the typed text. And that is uh, this one here. It's a bit uh, clumsy, but you get it. You see these uh, six, eight points. So now whatever I type will show up in this pink area. I can press enter. And it's done. So this is done. Uh, I can show it how it works. So I have to go to display up here and then preview, preview from first page. And uh, now I can click here 
and I can start typing. And now you see that if, if I type something, then it shows up in this pink area. And then if I press enter, then obviously it will uh, return to this display. And I moved around the things so they don't show up in the perfect order. So we finished with the typing part, but uh, we need to take care of this text box here, which I just moved away for the sake of demonstration. So I move it back. So this text box will be the text box, which basically catches the data, which we created in the uh, ASCII text input keyboard and how it catches it that uh, there's the following uh, here at the right side, we have the same VP address as for the text input. See, uh, if I click to the right location, you see that the VP is 1000 and the text box also should have the same address. And by sharing the same address, they access the same data. So you, whatever you typed in the keyboard, it will be shared between the text uh, box and the text input as well. So this is obvious. We set it. And then it's important to set the encoding mode here to this uh, 0x02 equals GBK. Uh, otherwise, you will see garbage characters. So I don't even bother with the others. And here, funnily enough, the text length is defined in bytes. So I just chose the double of the previous. It was 50 here because it's in words. So then that is 100 bytes. Font ID doesn't matter here. Uh, we don't care about those. But uh, we have this x direction lattice number and y direction lattice number. And here I have noticed that they have to be the same. Otherwise, I get garbage data. So I leave it like that. And the horizontal and vertical interval is basically just the spread between the letters. Uh, I kept it at zero. And then uh, I will show this keyboard output on this uh, area when I start the display. So now this part is actually ready to demonstrate something. So what I will do, I, I have already uploaded this code. And uh, in my previous tutorial, you can see how to do that. Uh, or just go to my website. And I also wrote an article about it. But now I connect the display to my computer uh, through Dwin's serial adapter. And then I will open uh, terminal software and I will show you also a camera picture uh, to, to show you what I type. So first I, I connect the display and uh, for that I also start uh, recording a video and then we will see the rest. So hopefully everything is visible, but uh, you see the display and the details. And uh, if you check the thing here, I said that we have some initial value, keyboard output, and uh, that is printed uh, right here. So that is just printed uh, by default. And now uh, I open a terminal. So I put it here so you can see the camera picture. So I uh, connect to the display. And now you will uh, see the output uh, soon. So I click here and now we have the display. So yeah. I just enter something. So you can see that uh, I started to type and uh, you can see that it shows up on the top left corner. So I will try to do it. So curious. Curious scientist. So I just press enter. And uh, first of all, you see the camera image that uh, we have the letters here, curious scientist. You can change the font uh, size, uh, whatever. But what is more important is this thing here. Uh, you can see the terminal. So we captured the data on our computer. And uh, now uh, we can analyze this data. And uh, I show you because it's in interesting. So we start from here. So the display has a fixed header and that is this 5AA5. This is always the same. And then here in hexadecimal numbers, which I don't know right now, which is the decimal equivalent of this, uh, we get 
the total data length. So, which is basically everything here, excluding the header length. And then 83 is this uh, VP read command. So we read something from the RAM, basically. And then uh, 1000 is the address. You just see it right here. And then uh, the 0A, uh, that should be the length of the received uh, data. And then uh, the rest is basically just a curious scientist here. And uh, then here you see the, the ending characters. So this is the FF, FF and uh, 00. So everything basically enclosed between the lengths and this uh, FF uh, characters is our uh, useful uh, text or useful data. So this is how you can uh, type in on a keyboard and send the data to the computer. So now we want to do the other way around. So uh, let me clean up and then I show it to you how to do it. So we are back here and then uh, we have to create another text box. And that is uh, through this text show and text uh, display. So that is uh, created here. And here we have to select another address, first of all. So up here I chose 2000 because that is far enough uh, from the 1000 plus the extra text uh, of these other inputs. So it will be 2000. And then uh, encoding is the same. So 0x02 equals GBK. And then I don't uh, bother about these things except the text length. So again, in bytes, 100 bytes. And uh, here I uh, chose uh, the X direction as 24, Y direction as 48. And you can see that here, I have the same for a text box, uh, but for some reason here, it was not working properly if I chose this to 48, but here it works. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. And then uh, here uh, we have the initial test value, which will be just uh, printed on the display. So again, let me show you the display and then we will send the data to the display uh, together. But now this time I will use my Arduino code. So we are still with the previous display. So you can see the previously entered text. And then here is the text, which is in the text box uh, on the display at the bottom right corner, initial test value. So that value will be overwritten. So now I have restarted uh, the display. So you can see that we lost uh, the value from here. And here we have the same value, which is at the uh, bottom right uh, corner of the editor. And uh, now I connected my stuff to the Arduino. So we will send uh, something through the Arduino serial terminal. So let me open it up and bring it here. So this is just a display, but then I just uh, enter something here. Uh, example text for this tutorial. And then I just press enter. <laughs> and then you can see it's there. So of course, uh, I haven't played around with the formatting. That's why you see it uh, a bit ugly, but it works. You can play around with the formatting because that's not my work. Uh, so you see the same text, example text for this tutorial. And you can see that at least the display breaks up the text uh, according to the available area. And then I just send another just to prove you that it works uh, properly. It works as intended. Hooray. Or I don't know how to write it. Probably here. Not a native speaker, sorry. So it works. So you can see it's very simple to send the text and show it on the display. And yeah, it works very fast. So yeah. Uh, it is very quick. So now uh, I will show you how to do this in the Arduino. So just before jumping to the Arduino uh, environment, basically this is all. So just a quick uh, wrap up. 
uh, we had to import a few files, which is done here at the config tool at the different parts. And then we had to import the image files. And then we could just basically draw areas about uh, certain areas, uh, which we want to interact with. And then we just give properties to those areas. Like I have this rectangle here, and then uh, now the rectangle has an address. It has an encoding mode. The text which is printed inside that rectangle has a size and has some initial value. So it's relatively simple, but the learning curve of this display is very steep and very high. Uh, I'm still learning it. So let's jump to the Arduino. That will be much more simpler. So as I said, we will be working with the software serial. And then I have two pins defined for that. You can define whatever. And if you use a better microcontroller, I just recommend you to use the hardware serial. And don't forget that you have to uh, yeah, twist the pins. So TX on the display becomes the RX on the Arduino and so on. So then we have a instance here uh, with the RX and TX pins. And then I have two arrays of characters. One holds the incoming data and another holds the string, uh, which is the output data basically. And then we have two serials. The first is the serial of the Arduino itself. And you could see on the terminal, or you will see on the terminal, that we have this Devin display message. This is just a random message. And uh, then we have the other serial. And as I mentioned, we have to use the 9600 as a baud rate, because the other, uh, this 115200, doesn't work really well. And uh, then yeah, I just set the pin mode for the uh, RX and TX uh, pins and wait for half a second. And then in the loop, I just uh, constantly pull the serial port and uh, look for opportunities with whether I can send or receive text. And first, uh, let's see how we fetch text. So if we have a data on the serial port of the Devin uh, display, then we enter uh, this part. And then uh, I just start this uh, counter because this uh, keeps track of our position in the buffer. Then uh, in this while, I basically fill in our array as long as we have data on the serial port uh, between the Arduino and the Devin uh, display. So then uh, I have an incoming byte, which is just one chunk of the data. But uh, when we read with the serial.read uh, function, we actually just uh, read one uh, byte at a time. So I read one byte at a time, and then I assign that byte, this guy here, into the it uh, item of the incoming data array, array of characters. And then uh, when I was testing the code, after every iteration, I was printing the value. Uh, on the serial port just to confirm that uh, I have the correct data. And then once this is done, then uh, we start with this. So you remember that uh, we saw this 83 uh, when we received data from the display through the serial port. And that uh, 83 is always the fixed uh, value. And that means that uh, there was a VP uh, red instruction performed on the display. And then the display returned uh, the data for us. And we also know that uh, there is a fixed uh, length between the beginning of the data, which is received from the display, and the beginning of the data which we entered on the display. So we first start with the header, and then we have a length, and then we have the uh, 83 as a command, and so on and so on. And then we enter uh, in the region where we have the data. But what is fixed is that in the incoming data 3, which is the fourth place, because zero indexing, remember, uh, if at this position we have 83 uh, hex uh, stored, then we can enter this part because that means that uh, the display is sending us something useful. And we also know that uh, the message which we want to read from the display, which is in this case the keyboard input, 
uh, is starting at key equals seven or at the seventh uh, number or seventh uh, position. So we start reading from that and we keep reading until we hit the first FF because the uh, terminating character in the uh, Deven display is starting with this FF. So then uh, we just keep outputting this uh, stuff. And uh, I show you here how it works because actually uh, this is not demonstrated by the Arduino code, but I showed you fetching the data by the other terminal software. So I will show you this very soon. So then, yeah, this is just uh, iteration and, and, and basically that's all. And after we did this, uh, I just empty the array because it can be that first I print something with 10 characters in the array, but the next printing will be five characters. Then the other five characters, uh, the last five, let's say, from the previous printing will be still in the array. And if I don't empty it, I will get mixed uh, data. So now uh, let me turn on the camera again and let me show you how this thing uh, works. So you see still we have this uh, display. So I bring up the serial monitor. So I just uh, send the data. So demonstration of process data. Hopefully this is not too long. Yeah, so this will be the demonstration of uh, processed uh, data. So I click here and then uh, what should we write? So dwin uh, display, and then I press enter. And there we go. Uh, we have the processed data on the uh, serial terminal. Let me do this. So another message let me send it another message here it's just uh, as you can see it's serial right and i don't put line break anywhere so it just continues uh, but it doesn't matter it, it works so it's just hard to see the display from the angle where i type so sorry for the clumsiness so It works. So we can process the data uh, perfectly, as you can see. So this is how we uh, received and processed the data from a Deven display. And then how to send the data to it. So now here we are listening to the PC, to the computer serial. And when, when we send some data from the serial terminal to the Arduino, then first I want to have this function. I will show you this after this uh, part. But I want to erase the previous text uh, shown on the display. And it's very easy uh, stuff. I just print a lot of spaces over the area and that's all. Uh, but I empty the array where I store my text. Because again, I have to get in the data byte by byte and fill in a character array with this set of bytes. And that's what I do here. So each item in the array will be one byte from the computer's serial port. And once that is done, I create the header. I send the total length of the data uh, to our display. So here I send the length of the data, which I'm going to display on the display. So the length of the text plus four. And the four comes from the write command, this guy here and the VP address, which is this plus this. So that is the 200. Zero, zero. And then here I print an extra space just to make sure that I can indent the data a little bit. You could see it on the display that the demonstration word, see the image, uh, started one space inside. That was just for my own convenience but uh, at least you can see how this exercise works. So that extra space is also accounted for, uh, which I print here before the real message. And that has to be passed uh, to this uh, parameter. So then length is there. 
And then this is the write command. So the reading is 83, the write is 82. And then uh, these two are the address. So 2000, done. And then this is the extra space. And then finally the text. And that's all. And uh, you could see that it works pretty much uh, well. And then uh, the erase text, yeah, again, uh, header and then uh, text length plus three. And we pass the text length as an argument and here it is 100. And uh, as I said, it's and wrote also very ugly solution, but it works. So I want to write something. Then I split up the VP address, which I passed again here. And that was the 2000. I, I split it up into two bytes because this one word, the address is stored in one word, but you have to pass it as two bytes. And then here I just print spaces until I run out of uh, the length of the text. And, and that's all. And uh, also that's all uh, regarding the video. So you can see that it's not super complicated, but uh, it's also not too simple uh, to use uh, this display in the beginning at least. But once you get uh, more and more uh, used to the way how, how you should uh, work with this display, then it will be easier and easier. And if this video explanation was not too detailed or something, please head over to my website. Link is in the description because I wrote an article about this uh, wall explanation. So you will find it there. And also, if you want to have this code, without uh, needing to follow my video and type it, you can become my uh, Patreon supporter and uh, download this code from my Patreon website. So please consider supporting me. And also if you find this video useful, also you can uh, support me by the thank you button. And that will allow me to create more and more tutorials, for example, on this display. And I already have an idea for the next uh, tutorial for this display, and that will be about numbers how to print normal uh, integer and how to print, uh, for example, a floating point number on the display. And also how to create a number somehow on the display by interacting with something and send it to the computer and then display it. So that will be the next project. So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.